Saunders, one of the top tennis players is making waves, but those waves cost money. Simone Pratt is the number one ranked Bahamian female tennis player and one of few players with a WTA ranking. She soon leaves and leaves not really knowing where she stands in terms of funding. I'm off to Canada to play a WTA $50,000 tournament. I'm now in the qualies. So hopefully I'm going to go there and qualify and then after I'm going to play a $25,000 tournament in Granby in Canada also. So I'm going to be there for two weeks trying to improve my WTA professional ranking. I'm now 1,038 so hopefully I can improve my ranking. They're very important. They determine how my future is going to be professionally. Um, it's going to be a big thing in my career, these tournaments. Now, Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association President Deron Donaldson says he's been working on fixing the funding issue, but it has not always been that easy. Well, I, I just took office, so I'm just trying to do follow-up from past administrations. And basically, I've seen Tim Munning, the director of sports, and he's assured that we probably can get him on some kind of subvention, but it's the minimal one. I, I'm... I'm really pushing the elite because she is an elite athlete. She has a WTA ranking, one of the first, you know, youngest females, 16. She's 16 years old. She's the number one women's um, tennis player in the country. I think she just obtained that in about December at the Invitationals. So, I mean, the, the biggest hiccup would be just trying to get it done. It isn't a hiccup yet, but I don't want it to be a hiccup. I don't even want to talk about a hiccup. I just want it done because, you know, we can't lose her. She's going to open the door for so many, not only female, but Bahamian tennis players all around the country. I just, I just don't think about it. You know, I just try to do my best and just try to move forward from that. I mean, I, I really don't think about it. More from Donaldson tomorrow. Now, if you didn't know that Minister V. Alfred Gray was the minister responsible for regattas, one would say it was the international fashion designer, Peter Nygaard. Sorry about that. For the second week in a row now, Nygaard has made a significant donation to the family island's regatta. Today, the regatta Santa Claus was at it again. Julian Gibson fills us in. There is a saying, there's nothing like a real true friend. And that's exactly what King Eric Gibson and international fashion designer Peter Nygaard share. Well, because of this friendship, Nygaard has coughed up $20,000 for the Acklins regatta. Once again, Mr. Peter Nygaard, who have uh, come to the rescue of the Acklins Island regatta. Matter of fact, a lot of people don't, don't realize that you have been sponsoring the Athens Regatta for over 25 years. I want to publicly now thank Mr. Peter Nygaard for all the contribution that has been made to the Athens Regatta. That contribution has helped many, many, many people on that island. Now, according to Peter Nygaard, the main reason he is sponsoring the Acklins Regatta is because of his friendship with King Eric Gibson and his love for the sport. It really came just from the heart, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, and uh, rather than uh, trying to get personal glory for it, I really wanted to see if I could do something really good for the islands, good for the sport of sailing, which I so very much love. And of course, I want to always and always support my brother, King Eric. And, uh, and I must tell you that uh, he personally has, uh, has uh, touched me on it he, uh, each time. I've worked all his regatta monies through, uh, actually from King, his personal efforts, and, uh, and continue to do so. And thanking Mr. Nygaard on behalf of the people of Auckland's was their member of parliament, Minister V. Alfred Gray. Regattas play a very important role in the economic life of the various islands where these regattas are held. And Acklands is no exception. I am delighted because I am from Acklands. I have a special place in my heart for that island. Also in attendance this morning was Minister Sheen Gibson. Well, Acklands, $20,000 now in the kitty, so you should see some competitive sailing. Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. All right, Julian, thanks a lot. Still talking sailing. The all Andrus Regatta and Barry Islands Regatta will get started tomorrow morning with the Class C Boating Competition. You'll see Re Revelation 319, Dream Gal, San Sally, Sweet Lassie, Lady Eunice, Sweet Island Gal, 
Asu Draw W Thunderbird staying alive as well. In the class B, you'll see Udiva, Lady Natalie, Passion, Queen Drusilla, Brylin Cobra, the Barbarian, Blue Shadow 2, and in Class A, the Southern Cross, Ed Sky, and Red Stripe. Again, they start tomorrow. The first annual AAA Marine Softball Classic will get started tomorrow night over in Spanish Wells with the AAA Marine Razorbacks taking on the Creative Bulldogs out of Abaco at 7 o'clock. They have the Blue Chip Buccaneers and the Black Scorpions from the NPSA, one team from Abaco to go along with the four teams from Spanish Wells. So interesting news there from Spanish Wells. For a number of years now moving on, a number of American football camps have been taking place in the Bahamas during the summer months. And this year will be no different thanks to the Mission Academy out of the United States. A big name NFL player will be in town next week to share his knowledge of the game. And we've been uh, blessed through Mission Academy to have a chance to bring Chris Canty of the New York Giants defensive end down. He was formerly with the Dallas Cowboys and now he's with the, of course, the Super Bowl champs and uh, he's going to be coming down and doing a sports camp for us Monday and Tuesday over at D.W. Davis School. What can we expect from that kind of camp? Oh, just a lot of excitement. Chris is just a great guy. He's going to be bringing a couple people from the Atlanta Falcons with him too, so they're going to take time just teach kids skills about American football and uh, have some real good training for them to help them you know, with their skills. How did this all come about? We've been working here through uh, the Church of the Nazarene and through the United Methodist Church. Chris's mom is a United Methodist minister, and she's wor he's working through one of the Methodist churches back in the U.S. to come here and, and do this camp. Mike Shin of the Mission Academy knows full well that American football has become a global game, and so there's definitely a need to look for talent outside of the United States. There's a lot of untapped talent here and hopefully maybe with Chris and his foundation and him getting involved more in the future here and bringing more NFL players down, maybe you know, it can help with American football and help with the talent here to have someone look at them and to see them and say, hey, this might be worth somebody coming and taking a look at this youngster or something here in the Bahamas. And we're excited to be uh, working with the CAFL and uh, working through them for future relationships and to do more of this with the NFL from the United States. Come.